I'm Zoe Lewis. I'm going to show you today how you can needle felt a little mouse like this one. It's a good project to start off with, a good beginner's project. And so I'll show you how to get started. So I tend to go with the about that length, the length of my foam pad. So here you've got your wool, you're going to turn it round and roll it up, tucking in the edges as you go. So roll it up nice and firmly. I'm applying quite a bit of downward pressure. Okay, because the tighter you roll it, the less prodding you need to do. So you've got two needles, one with a green tip, that is a coarser, thicker needle. One with a red tip, that is a thinner needle. So the green one's good to get our project started, the red one for finishing it off. So slow and steady, prod in and out. You want to keep the heel of your hand nice and low on the foam pad so that if you do happen to prick yourself, you're not coming from a great height. So slow and steady prods and keep turning and prodding. Okay, turn and prod. Always work at the end away from your fingers. Always apply the pressure in the direction you are traveling. So if you go in at an angle, apply the pressure at that angle. You don't want to apply any downward pressure when you're going in it that way because the needle might snap off. Okay, so slow and steady. Listen for the crunching of the snow. You're making use of all these barbs all the way up the lower part of this needle. Always store your needles in the foam pad so they don't roll on the floor and get trodden on by humans or pets. So jab away. You'll see that I switched it round and started working on the other end. I am going in diagonally, but always make envisaging where that point goes into the foam, not into those fingers. Keep turning and prodding. If you haven't rolled it up tight enough, you might find you've got a very long, thin sausage. Don't worry about it at this stage. Just go in diagonally from the ends, okay? You can just go in diagonally. You can even hold it up on its end like that and hold it from the top and go down the way like this. That will also shorten it up and make it tighter. If the middle section is soft and squidgy, just keep your fingers well out the way and prod around that section. So you want to aim to get a tapered end and one end that's fatter for your mouse. So you can go in lines from about a third of the way along and keep turning it and prodding. If this ends very soft, just hold it like so and go in through the middle, being careful of your fingers, prod it in. You can even hold it just on the edge like that if you're worried. And then you can get it pointy again by turning like this. Now then if you have a ridge or you think your mouse isn't fat enough, anything that you're not all that happy with, you can add extra wool and wrap it around and you can prod that in place. If you had a lump anywhere that you didn't like, just keep working on that lumpy bit and it will soon prod in. To make the ears, we're going to take a piece of wool that's about the length of my index finger and about the thickness of it and we're going to make a little loop like so and you're going to hold it so imagine the loops there hold it closely like that and use your green needle again and you're going to prod around it's like you're drawing around the outside edge of it okay you also need to do this gentle hook and jab Hook and jab, hook and jab. Don't apply 
sideways pressure on that needle so it's a gentle hook and jab. You need to just keep the tip upright when you do it. Peel it off because it will start getting felted onto your foam. Turn it over and repeat on the other side. You need to keep doing this until the fibres stop coming out the other side. Measure it against your mouse, check you're happy with the size it's going to turn out. We are going to tear off all of this excess. It's just so you've got something to hold on to. If it's going to be too wide and you're not happy with it, hold it on its side and use your red needle and go in along the edge and it will soon, you see how it's squished it in? Turn it over and do it from the other side. You can always go in diagonally with the red needle around the edge as well, just to neaten it up. If one ear turns out looking thinner than the other and it looks a bit see-through, you can just tear off a few wisps from the bottom and layer them on on top and prod them in place. Remember the hook and jab. Now we're going to take some pink and we're going to make the little inserts for the ears. Take off a few wisps. Pinch it into a little ball. Pop it on your foam and just get it started. Hook and jab. Get some of those fibres matted together. Draw a circle with your needle. Peel it off. It's still very fluffy. I'm going to pop it into the centre and use my red needle just to gently jab it in place. If you do too much jabbing, all the pink fibres will come out of the back of the ear and you don't really want that. So if you can, go in slightly diagonally so the fibres tuck within the ear rather than pop straight back out the back. That's why we prod it on the foam initially to get some of the fibres knotted together so they're not as long. Okay, so I'll just check the back, it doesn't look too bad, but if there are any, just do a little shallow jab to get them tucked in. Okay, one done, one to go. Now we're ready to attach the ears on, so I'm going to tear off from the very tips a little bit at a time. So we've got rid of most of it, and then I'm going to open it up. So we've got a nice flat base, like so. And then decide where I'm going to pop it on, hold it in place. And I'm going to use my green needle and I'm going along the back of the ear and then hold that and go along the front of the ear. Put it all the way around. If your ear looks too big, you can use your red needle and go right in through the top of the ear carefully with your fingers because it's a small, a small thing to be fiddling around with. Okay, so you can go all the way around there and that will just cinch the ear in smaller. Bring it down closer to the mouse's body. Okay, so there we have one. I'm just going to work on the nose again, make it a little bit narrower. There we go. So I'm just going to work on my nose a little bit more because I don't feel very happy with it. I'm using the red needle now just to do a bit of finer felting because you'll find that as this gets firmer, the green one leaves more holes. You don't really want the holes. Now for the nose, take some pink, roll it up into a little ball, get it started with a few prods, doesn't really matter which needle you use, green or red, green's quicker. Okay, roll it again in your finger and thumb, couple more jabs, keep your fingers well out the way. Okay, 
hold it in place. So I kind of hold it with thumb and third finger and just use my index finger to hold it in place. Pop it on. Get my finger out of the way once it's on. Okay, once it's started to get attached, you can go all the way around the edge. If your nose, the brown part of the nose, becomes very concaved and dunks inwards when you're attaching the pink nose, take the pink nose off and have another jab up the end of the brown nose before you attach it, because it's obviously not been felted firmly enough. Now for the eyes, take a few wisps of black and you'll be surprised how little you need. Again, pinch it between your thumb and finger, pop it where you think you want it to go and jab it in place. If you use the red needle, you can kind of stroke the fibres into place. If you think the eye looks too big, you can use your green needle and poke it in and it will make it disappear quite deep inside. If you don't like where you've put it, you can pinch it out and put it, reposition it. You can do this twizzle with the needle, it catches any loose fibres. Twizzle and prod. It amazes me how every mouse I make turns out so differently. Look at these two. he has got really big eyes and this one's got tiny ones. I'm going to make the tail. So you can do it the same colour, brown if you wanted to, but I'm going for the bright pink. So you just take off a length that's about, again, the size of my finger and you're going to roll it between your thumb and finger. You want it quite thick. You can always add more to it. Get it started off and then you're going to use your green needle and you're going to just start prodding. Okay, you can tuck and jab the end. You want one end left fluffy for attaching it onto the mouse. So jab along, roll, can even roll between your palms. If your tail's too thin, so you can add an extra wisp like this, roll it round and put it on. And if you want your tail to have a curve, if you just hold it in the curve, and jab around the curve and go a little bit diagonally across those corners, the bends. Okay, so tear off any excess that you don't want. Position it. And then use your green needle, poke it in place. Okay, so there we have the mouse with his tail. So the final thing is to attach some whiskers. So tear off some of the silk. If you don't have silk, you could just use um, normal thread. I've got quite a large eyed needle here. So I'm just going to thread it through and then I'm going to post it through either side of the nose. Okay, and then I'm going to use my red needle and just prod through the front of the face just to anchor those whiskers in place. And then I'm going to take the scissors and snip them to the right length. Okay, and there you have him, your little mouse. So thanks for joining me. Bye.